Welcome to Asset Rush Talk, where we talk with the pioneers and the innovators of the financial sector. Today I'm here with Michael from Heritage Bank. Thank you, Michael, for being here. Please introduce yourself. Thank you for the invitation and thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Michael Welty. I'm managing partner of Bank Heritage and Head Private Banking. Uh, I joined the bank recently, a few months ago, and I'm very much looking forward to our conversation. Now, Michael, what drives you in this business? What drives you as a person in our sector? Tell us more about that. Oh, well, I'm, I'm a full-blooded private banker. I'm, I'm Swiss, I was born abroad, but uh, I love banking. I think we have such an amazing industry in Switzerland. Uh, funny enough, the biggest critics we get from Switzerland, but when you travel abroad, it's amazing how people are impressed by, by the Swiss Financial Center and by Switzerland as a country. So I consider myself and every Swiss banker a little ambassador to the outside world and I never get tired to, to keep on repeating that. What was your aspiration to get into banking and what is your aspiration today? Well, the start with banking is, is very typical for a Swiss family, right? You have your parents, your father saying, start with something good, something solid, and obviously as a Swiss, it's banking. Um, so that's how it started. So over the years, uh, after the apprentice, after the studies, you need to find a way what you, what you want to do. Now, back then, private banking was not uh, the major business of the Swiss banks. It was more on the credit side. Uh, but what always fascinated me is the personal contact with private people. Wealthy entrepreneurs, wealthy individuals from all over the world who seek something in Switzerland where we have something so prestigious and the safety and the stability where they seek for advice. So they come naturally to Switzerland and they seek for your experience and advice. And I found that always uh, fascina uh, fascinating. Um, so when you start as a junior and you get more, more responsibility, you want to build more on that and you want to give them value back. And that's why I stayed there for the last 30 years. So what are the core uh, things that you would name when it comes to difference and what we do differently in Switzerland? Yeah. Um, one big aspect is the tradition, I would say. Huh? We have several hundred years of safety, stability and tradition. Um, Often marketplaces like Singapore, Dubai, etc. are considered as competitors. I wouldn't say they're competitors, they're just different. Uh, what they're for sure not having is the long-lasting tradition, which we for, do, for sure do. Um, private banking or banking in Switzerland is part of our DNA. You cannot learn that when you come and, and live here for two, three years. You, you need a decade or more to start to breathe it and feel it. So this is one thing where, where I think we have a big advantage towards the other countries. But it has also shown, and statistics show that, we are still the biggest marketplace in the world for wealth management. Uh, we are the biggest innovators, even though it doesn't look like from outside very often. Um, we are enablers because last couple of years the crypto guys came to Switzerland and uh, founded the Crypto Valley. So we are attractive and we should see it that way and we should be sure that we talk about the, the success stories and look to the outside because we are attractive, the people see the attraction and they come to Switzerland. And we should not be shy to talk about it and we should be proud of what Switzerland is doing in that, in that sector. So we have experience, we have talent here yes. in Switzerland, we have tradition. So where do you see the innovation? coming in in Switzerland and, and what do you think, how do you define innovation in that sense? I think we have to first look a bit at the market space, right? I mean, we have uh, over 200 banks. Now, they are all well positioned in their specific field and their specific sector. We have the big banks, the international bank, which, ser which served clients in a certain way, which is usually very streamlined, very I would just say put in boxes in a certain way. They have an idea and they just try to be bigger in that what they do. So if you talk about the big banks, they have very little or very few possibility to adapt to client needs. They have an idea mm -hmm. and the client either likes it or doesn't. Now for the, all the other banks like boutique banks like Bank Heritage, 
you have the possibility to adapt to client needs, right? Sure. And we like that because one of the key things we think is important is to listen. Now, it is different when you have a handful of VIP clients where, which you handle as a private banker uh, versus a huge sales machinery of an inter international bank who says, listen, this is what we do, please buy our product. So we rather engage, we sit down, we listen, because there is about success pl uh, succession planning where you have succession in the family, in the businesses. Now, why are we ideal partners for that? Um, the, the Swiss private banks in general, they are family owned, most of them are family owned. Now, Looking at my bank, Bank Heritage, Bank Heritage is in principle founded by two wealthy families, two successful families who come from the soft commodity trading business. Now, they are uh, global leaders in their sector of coffee beans, cocoa beans and hops. Um, and if, when you're a global leader in this industry, at a certain point you have your own needs for wealth management investing. That's how the bank was created. And then at a certain point, you start to open. You start to open and say, listen, we do it this way. You might want to join us. You might want to join us with our investment ideas. So you start to generate club deals. You have private markets. So you, you give options to clients which can invest alongside the founders and the shareholders. And this is hardly possible if you talk about the global banks who represent in Switzerland. So coming back to your question of what is the innovative part, we are innovative because we enable people to invest alongside with us. We have ideas and we show them to our clients and customers. That is within the bank. Now, if you look at the outside of the industry, we need to partner. Right? We don't have huge IT departments or huge product departments which can uh, produce like a factory and you sooner or light, uh, later find a client for that. Now what we do is we go with partners. So if we have a specific need, we look at the best match where we can say, okay, can you solve this problem? Because we would like to achieve this goal for this client. So you're problem solvers, you're actually very oriented, client oriented, and you're really taking, so say, uh, your innovation alongside it, or you develop innovation alongside it with your clients. What would you say are the biggest achievements in that sense that you saw in your short time with Heritage? Um, you can look at achievements from, from different aspects. So if you look from a performance point of view, obviously, a successful exit is an achievement once you have uh, structured the deal and you have a successful exit and you therefore have a generated an, a performance which is not coming out of the ordinary investment universe which we have as a bank as well with the portfolio management. So that is a success within a product or in a, in a, in a performance related matter. I think what I have seen in this time is more the human factor which is within the Bank uh, Heritage. The people are ambitious and the people are passionate. And the passion about banking, this is really what I care about. And the client feels that. So having a bank and bankers which are passionate to talk to clients and say, listen, I find a solution, talk to me, open up to me. Tell me what challenges you. Tell me your worries. I'm here to listen and I'm ready to help. And you see already the way we look at it is not always only financially related. Of course, at the end of the day, we are a bank, so it's about money and being invested. But the way to that goes via various um, um, entry points. I'll give you an example. As a family-owned bank, as having two major shareholders which come themselves from uh, uh, almost 200 years of industrial business out of the soft commodity. They have succession planning issues as well as a family. Now, who is the best person to talk to about it? If you as a client have succession needs and demands, then you can talk to us. So uh, we are ready to counsel. We are counseling with the clients and say, listen, 
This is how we solved it in the bank. This is how the succession planning works. So this is very successful and there is something where we can make a difference. So you clearly respect the trust in your client's relationship and you build on that trust. Now, how would you say uh, does that reflect in the growth effects? We are not here to do a sprint, we are here to do the marathon. So the way we have built the bank is not on a short term uh, income or um, squeezing dividends for the shareholders uh, and then be happy from year to year. So the bank, the way we have built it and we, uh, the way we build it for the years to come is on a long term path. So it's, an, it's a growth where we say we don't need to be aggressive, but we're ambitious. We want to be agile but we want to remain the tradition of Swiss banking. We're a Swiss bank, so that comes with certain values. Now, the way we built the bank is uh, on human capital. That is uh, uh, very, very important for us because at the end of the day, we are approachable. We are, uh, you can contact us and you can talk to us. Uh, we want to ensure that all the bankers within the organization enjoyed the benefits of a flat hierarchy. So obviously the processes are very lean, um, if you have an issue to discuss you can always approach the executive committee or the, or the shareholders and they are here to support. That can be in client acquisition, it can be in client management. So that is one aspect of, of um, the way we approach it. But then obviously we get acquainted with investment opportunities. So. Um, same as your industry, securitization is extremely important for us because that's how we access uh, the private markets. And we make things bankable, which is in the benefit from the bank, is in the benefit to the client because we can overlook and everything and we can consolidate. Especially with, fam with complex family situations, wealth is not always related to bankable assets. Wealth is also related to unbankable assets and we are uh, helping. Well, it's certainly the overall portfolio allocation and the need of your investors and clients um, that have to be covered holistically. Now, would you agree with the, with the statement that you're taking more of a merchant banking approach? You could look like that, yes. Um, it's not that we would go into huge financing and, and, and taking risk on our balance sheet because at the end of the day, that is always the challenge which you have as a private bank. You want to be a conservative private bank and make sure that the tier one ratio is high, um, that you're safe and stable because most of the money we get is of course brought to our custody. Our external asset managers, our prior clients and all the partners, they rely that the bank is safe and sound. So that is guaranteed. Where you go for lending is uh, for, for Lombard loans and mortgages where you have a certain risk appetite because it's in, it's in the right balance and you have access to the collateral. Now the merchant banking part, and that is a bit the, uh, the difference versus the universal banks as well, they obviously take the money of the client and lend it. Now, the lending part can be to SME, they can be uh, to, to multinational companies, and depending on the economical um, situation, uh, there might be, might be uh, uh, drawbacks you, you're having. As a private bank, you don't have that. So that is where we differentiate uh, clearly from the big ones, and you want to ensure the bank is safe. So with the approach you're taking, you're very purpose-lined, also with your partners. Now, how do you see that ecosystem grow? Like, what do you see today that you maybe haven't seen in the past? Or how do you think that market develops? As I said before, clients challenge us as well, right? How do you see the market? How do you position the bank? What innovative products can you offer? So I, I mentioned already that private markets are an important part for us and therefore the securitization. Now, this has brought obviously a variety of investment opportunities. Um, you know, I, I, I'm one of the early adopters from the crypto sphere out of the banking, so I would never say that I'm very deep into the crypto space like uh, our friends in the valley. Um, but I want to give them access to a senior banker whom they can share ideas and talk to. But on the other hand, we need to manage expectations. We cannot put the bank at risk. Now, the highest possible regulated company you can have in Switzerland is a bank. 
right? It's not an asset manager, it's not a startup, it's a bank. So therefore, obviously, a bank has a different risk appetite and a different risk profile. How we can solve that is via corporations. We can cooperate with external ones who are having the same agility as we do, but outside. And once they have done it the way they should, they can present it to us. We might even say, listen, we see the trend rather in a different direction and, and they might adapt to that. Um, but we form partnerships and that is the way uh, forward. So we don't need to develop everything inside. As you know, um, sometimes agility outside is better than, than from inside. Certainly. Do you think that uh, bigger institutions lack that opportunity? Well, I would say uh, all our career started in, in big banks, right? Um, I, I uh, joyfully look back, but I'm so happy to be in Banque Heritage, where we have certain values and, and a flat hierarchy. Uh, I'm not trying to avoid an answer on, on that, but <laughs> the big banks, I think, have a different purpose than, than what, what the boutique banks have. It's sometimes um, a bit frustrating, the arrogance we have in the financial industry. And I say we, even though I exclude myself and our bank, but the financial industry is not having the solution and the answers for everything. We try, um, but we're not always uh, succeeding. So. I think the agility which you have on a smaller size bank without the additional risk involved, having partners and executive committee members which are partners and put their own money into the bank versus being in a CEO of an international bank where you at the end of the day just an employee, you have different incentives. You are not the same type of an entrepreneur as we are. Well, entrepreneurship certainly matters. I mean, also creates the innovators and the pioneers of the market. Um, how do you think that entrepreneurship helps to expand the investment universe? The entrepreneurship is always with the desire to find a solution at the end of the day. So you need to decide whether you want to put your money at stake or not and what is the potential outcome. The outcome can be in a great solution or in a high return. Same as our clients do. If they decide to build a factory, they need to think of the whole value chain they create or how to change it. Um, we do the same. So when we come as, as, as a, a private bank where we say, should we go for this product line? What is the upside? What is the downside? What is the risk? It requires a lot of analysis. Um, you need to see what are the consequences, but then you need to take a point where you say, let's do it. We see a great opportunity in that. Or you stop it and you say, well, the idea is good, but either the market is not ready, we are not ready, and we, sh we don't want to go forward. The big differentiation is the people. That's, that, makes, that makes the big difference. At the end of the day, you always need to be sure you have your core team around you who understand your vision, who understand your ambition and share the passion. If you don't have the core team around, it's difficult to implement any entrepreneurial idea. Well, entrepreneurship also has to do a great deal with taking decisions and you certainly assist your clients in those decisions, in long-term decisions. Um, on the other hand, where do you think you oppose to the rest of the peers of the private banks that are working alongside it in this market? The most satisfying um, achievement we can have in our industry is to get a, re a referral from a client. That is for a private bank the ultimate goal, right? To have partners who say, we like what you do. Or to have partners who say, I have an issue, can I brainstorm with you? That is what we want to achieve. Now, my ambition for the bank and my ambition for myself is we want to be and we will be the first bank to talk to here in Switzerland. What does it mean? If someone comes from abroad seeking advice, he can Google. He might Google the services he needs. But we want our network partners and our corporation partners to understand they can call us. They can 
bring a client or a prospective client to us because we are ready to take an appointment even if it's not straightforward about an amount of X and the account opening in, in the right way. So we want to sit down. Now, obviously, we have financials and economies which apply to us as well, right? There is a limit to that, how many meetings you can take a day. Uh, we almost work 24-7, but not 24-7. So at the end of the day, we want to be open and we want to be seen. And that's why we aim to be the first bank to be contacted to from people who look for private banking and boutique services. So the international business, the attraction of Switzerland is a big part of your work as well. Um, what can you tell us a bit more about that? Um, great question, because it's also what differentiates us from the rest. Now, if you look at the shareholder structure and the management structure we have, we have managers who have served in uh, large banks, in international banks, with a vast experience of emerging markets. Coming from Asia, going to Latin America, East, South, so we have the skill set on the management level to understand the particularities of these countries. Therefore, we also understand how Switzerland is of attraction to them and what we need to offer. Right? On the shareholder structure, it's the same. The shareholders, as I told you before, um, are largest uh, uh, leaders in soft commodity trading globally. So what does it mean? They are entrepreneurs for generations going out on the field, seeing what happens in which country. So they are not sitting at the desk, having a banking career, and then you progress with a certain market. So they have seen all the markets around the globe. They have visited everything. And this experience is, you cannot learn that. You cannot uh, uh, learn that from courses or um, uh, being a banker in Switzerland only. You have to travel, you have to meet clients there. And that is an experience obviously we share amongst us, uh, amongst the executive committees and the partners. But that is also something we want to share with the clients. Just to wrap this up, what would you say is your number one reason for being in banking? The passion. I, I, I came as a, as a 16 year old uh, because my father uh, told me to, to, to go for a banking career and try that out. He was right. Um, and when you do something which you like, it's not work anymore. Um, you know that. So the, the working day has no start and no beginning because when you wake up and when you go to bed, it's usually related to banking and you, you think about that. So as a wrap up is everybody who wants to pursue a career in banking, make sure you're at the right spot in the bank and go with 100% with uh, speed and passion and dedication. Wonderful. Michael, I think we will hear a lot from you and Bank Heritage uh, going forward. You certainly accepted the challenge to bring this bank to the next level. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for this talk and great to have you here. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.